Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. So first of all, apologies for my hair. And mom, if you're watching, do not worry, I will be going to get a haircut later today. Uh, and today's video is going to be talking about media galleries. A lot of you have been commenting and asking about media galleries, how to connect them to collections, how to connect them to dynamic pages, and how to upload new images to a media gallery. So all of that is what we're going to be talking about today in the tutorial. And at the end, there'll be a little bonus about how to add custom functionality to your gallery using VeloCode. So if that interests you, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started by adding a gallery to our page. And you can add a gallery by going over here to add elements and gallery. And you'll see here that there are a lot of different kinds of galleries here. Uh, and these can have implications for what your gallery can do. Uh, so not all of these galleries are created equal in terms of functionality. So pro galleries uh, might be different than grid galleries or slider galleries in terms of functionality. Uh, but what I really want to focus on here is just how we connect these galleries to data. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to pick this very simple grid gallery right over here. And I'm going to add it to our page. Excellent. So we have our grid gallery right over here. And you could add and manage media uh, manually. So you can just go over here and you know, get rid of pictures and add pictures. So I can go ahead and click delete. I can click add media. I can upload from my computer. I can upload from Wix. I could do whatever I want. But I might want to connect this to data. So if you want to connect your pro gallery or gallery to data, then you'll have to add a data set to your page. So what I have here in terms of collection setup, so I set up this collection already. It's called example. And what I have here is just a title. For each one, I have kind of a cover image. And I have this media gallery field. OK, so these are both fields that you can add to your collection. You just have to click Add Field. And then you select the field type, either image or media gallery, where a media gallery will allow you to upload several images or videos uh, into the gallery. And there are two ways that we can connect this collection to our gallery. So both of them will need us to add a data set. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, add content elements, and add a data set to the page. And this data set is going to need to be linked up to our example data set. And I'm going to make it read only. Let's say we'll display 12 items. Um, and I can go ahead and grab this pro gallery and connect it to data. So I'm going to connect it to the example data set. And you'll see here that I already have two options here. So I have one option to connect it to the data set. And I have another option to connect it to a media gallery inside of the data set. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click example data set. And I'm going to say that the image sources will come from image. And I can also connect the titles to title, uh, descriptions if I have descriptions, links if I have links, etc. These are all things that you can set up inside of the collection. And you'll see here now that basically what it did is it presented, unfortunately, I have two images here that are the same, but it took my three items that I have in the collection and it presented each image from each item inside of the gallery. So it's essentially acting somewhat like a repeater. But the other option would be if I go here uh, and I connect my images, so if I go to uh, connect to data. And instead of selecting here this example data set, I'm going to select the media gallery inside of the data set. And now you can see here that essentially what it's showing is the media gallery from my first item. OK, so even though, uh, let's go here to um, settings. And here I have number of items to display, but it's only going to show from the first. Uh, and if I add a filter in, let's say, so I say that the title should be example two instead of example one, and I add that filter in, now it'll go ahead and it'll show me the images from my second item. 
So let's talk a bit about how this would translate to the use of dynamic pages, because I know that that is something that comes up quite often. So if I go over here to pages uh, and menu, da, 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 I go to, sorry, lost my train of thought there for a second. So I go to my collection and I add dynamic pages. So I can add a blank dynamic page, dynamic item page, or a dynamic list page. So I'm going to add dynamic item page. And I'm going to go ahead and add a dynamic, um, let's see here, add, we could add from here as well. So add items list. So I'm going to add this to the site. Okay, so now I essentially essentially have two uh, dynamic pages for each one. So I have one items all, and I have one items title. So items all is something that's connected to all of the items in my collection, and items title is something that's connected to each specific item. So what I could go ahead and do now is connect, for example, here I'm on one of my specific item pages. So I can go ahead and connect this to the title. One second. Ah, okay, so this added, sorry, my bad. I accidentally added a new collection here, which is not what I wanted to do. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these by deleting that collection. Go to collections, yeah, so it, I accidentally added a completely new uh, items collection there. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Don't want that, yeah. What I wanted to do here was to add a new dynamic list page for my existing collection. Sorry about the confusion. Okay, so now um, this has been removed, so these can be deleted. Go ahead and delete these. Yeah, don't need that. Okay, so now I have my dynamic pages. Like I said before, we have example all and example title. And let's start with example title. So you can see here that these titles are already linked up. So I have your example one, and I can flip through the dynamic pages here. And they already were nice enough to take my cover photos and connect them as well here to this main image. But what I want is also to add our gallery. So if I go over here and add in a gallery, so let's choose a different gallery this time just to try a bunch of different ones. So let's say I'm going to choose this slider gallery. Excellent. And I'm going to connect this to data. So I'm going to connect it to the media gallery for this specific item. And now this is displaying the images from this specific item. Okay, uh, and if I go here and I flip through the different pages, you'll see that this media gallery will change based on the images that I have in the media gallery for that page. And if I go to my list page, so if I go here to example all, what I could do here is I could have a list like this with all of my items, which is nice. Uh, but what I could also do is get rid of this repeater and I can go ahead and add a gallery instead. So I'm going to go here and add a gallery. Let's add this showcase slider gallery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link that. Let me just make sure you can see the database. So right over here, I'm going to link that to, sorry, this is already connected. So I'm going to link my gallery to each of these items and the image source will be image. And for the links, I can connect it to the dynamic page. So I'm gonna connect it to example title. Okay, and now what should happen is that I have this gallery over here. And if I go into preview mode, then when I click on one of these images, it'll essentially no, that's not what I expected to happen. Uh, maybe I have to change something in the settings. One second. Okay, so I'm going to go here into the gallery settings. 
and I'm going to go into settings. When clicking on an item, a link opens. Okay, so instead of expanding like it did before, I wanted to go to the link that I had set using the connection to the data collection. And now if I click here, then what should happen is it should navigate to that specific dynamic page. Okay, so there we set up navigation between a dynamic list page and individual dynamic pages just using media galleries. Okay, so now that we've talked about displaying the items and the galleries that we already have stored in the collection, let's talk a bit about how we can allow users to upload new images or videos to our media gallery. So here I am on one of the dynamic pages. You don't have to do this on a dynamic page. You can manage this as well using data sets on a regular page. I just think since we're already limiting ourselves to one specific item from the dynamic page, it might be a little easier to understand how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some buttons here. So I'm going to add a upload button. So that's right over here, upload buttons. So I'm going to add one right over there. And I'm going to add in another button, which will act as our submit button. So let's go right over here, theme buttons, and I'm going to add a button. And let's just change the name of this button to submit, just so we know what it does. And now what we need to do is we need to connect this upload button and the submit button to a data set. But the issue is that our current data set that comes with the dynamic page is a read-only data set, OK? Uh, we can also change it to read and write if we want to modify the data that's on this page. So that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to select read and write. So now it's also displaying what we have on the page, but I can also modify the collection using something like we built down here. So I'm going to go back to our buttons, and I'm going to connect this upload button to our media gallery. And it's already select the data set is already selected as the collection data set. I do have the option also of adding another data set if I so chose. And that's how you would do it on a page that's not the dynamic page. And last but not least, I'm going to connect this submit button. And I'm going to con it's already connected to the data set. And the click action is going to be submit. And I'm going to add a success message just so that we know that we have submitted the data successfully. And let's give it a spin. So I'm going to go ahead and go into preview mode. And I'm going to click Add a File. And now I'm just selecting a random image from my computer. It happens to be a cover image from some other video that I created. And I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. OK, the content has been submitted. We don't see it at the gallery in the gallery at the moment because we're going to need to refresh this page in order to see the new data. So I'm going to go back to the editor. And if I go into the collection over here, so I'm going to go into Content Manager and go into the collection, example collection. And I take a look at the media gallery for, I think it was example one. So let's go preview. Okay, no, let's go manage media. Um, and if I scroll all the way down, you can see here the new image that I just added. It gets added here to the end of the gallery. Uh, you can't see it on the page because there's way too much in this gallery. So if I just select a bunch of these images, whoops, and delete them. Is that enough? Maybe I'll delete a few more. Delete, save. And I'm going to go ahead and go into preview mode. And now we can see the new image that I had uploaded. OK, so that's how you would let a user upload a new image to a gallery. Obviously, you want to be careful with things like this, because <laughs> if every user could just randomly upload things to their gallery, then to, to a gallery, then you, know, you might have some issues. Um, so you'll want to pay attention to permissions and who is allowed to upload. Uh, you can have maybe one dynamic page, which is meant for people to upload the images if they have the right permissions, and another dynamic page for people to 
just view the content uh, if they don't have the correct permissions. Uh, so that is how you would upload a file. In terms of deleting a file, it can get a little more complicated, and that is somewhere where we're going to have to involve Velo. So next, what I want to talk about is how we can use Velo to populate and control our media galleries. OK, so for this demonstration, I am back on the home page. And what I've done is I've disconnected our pro gallery here from the data set. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing around with how to populate this gallery using Velo and how to manipulate its actions using Velo and really just tap into all of the gallery functionality uh, using Velo to kind of extend its functionality and allow us to do things like I mentioned earlier, which is let's say delete an image or something along those lines. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to turn on dev mode if dev mode is not on yet and open the code editor right over here. And I have opened the gallery uh, documentation right over here. And first thing you'll see that in the introduction, they, they mention the gallery capabilities. And this is something that has to do with what I mentioned earlier, that there are a lot of different uh, galleries and each gallery has different capabilities. So if you're trying to do something with a gallery and it's not working, you might want to just tap into this galleries, uh, gallery uh, capabilities property and see what the capabilities are. So let's try that with our current gallery. So I'm going to go here into our IDE and I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to rename this gallery my gallery. I just don't like it when there are numbers uh, in the IDs unnecessarily. And I am going to, how much did I zoom in? Too much. Okay. And I'm going to select this gallery. So I'm going to go and select the element, my gallery, and I'm going to tap into its gallery capabilities. And let's just store this in a variable. So const gallery, whoops, gallery capabilities equals, and let's log that in console.log gallery capabilities. Let's just see what's possible with this current gallery that I have here. So I'm gonna go into preview mode. And right over here, we have a list of the gallery capabilities. So is playable. Uh, does that mean, that means we can uh, play a video if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, play operations. Okay, so I can't use, let's say dot play here. Uh, and let's go over here. Yeah, dot play. And the other one is has current item. So I can't get the current item of this gallery. Uh, this kind of makes sense because as you see here, all of the items are sort of created equally. So it, it's not like one of the other galleries which has some kind of navigation where you can move back and forth between the items. They're just all kind of displayed here. So there's no current item and it does not have navigation buttons because same reason. And it doesn't, uh, and it does support all media types. Okay, so it'll, you could have images here, you could have video here. Okay, so that's just an example, and different galleries will have different capabilities. So always check that out if you are encountering issues using the Velo API for managing your gallery. Uh, now, what I want to do is to populate this gallery using data. And this data could be either external data or it could be data that comes from Wix. Uh, so let's just use the data that I already have in the collection, but just keep in mind that this could have been done in a similar way with data from an external source. So I'm going to go ahead and add, sorry, import Wix data. And I'm going to create a function which will be called populate gallery and it's going to be an asynchronous function because we're going to be querying data and the first thing I'm going to do is going to say const example query result and that's because the name of my collection is example or examples 
and this is going to be await wix data dot query exam i actually do need to check what the collection is called example uh, example and dot find so here i'm going to find all of the uh, image all of the items or at least the first 50 or so items uh, in the collection if you wanted to limit this in another way you can add filters to your query uh, and again if you were getting your data externally then you wouldn't need this part at all and i'm going to say const my item equals example query result that items zero so i'm just going to select the first item that we get back and I'm going to say const my gallery equals to my item dot gallery. What did I call it? Let's see. Uh, uh, where am I here? And media gallery. Media gallery. OK, so this should query our collection and get back just the gallery uh, value sorry the value of the gallery field for that specific item and i'm just going to console.log my gallery so as a first stage i just want to see what this data looks like so i know how to transfer that data to my gallery so i'm just going to call this function right over here populate gallery now let's go into preview mode And it's undefined. OK, back to the editor. What did I do wrong? Example query results. Zero, my gallery equals my item dot media gallery. Big A, small a. OK, let's go into preview. <clears throat> Still undefined. OK, <laughs> let's take a step back. Uh, let's see if the problem is here, so I'm going to say console.log example query result and my item. Just to see what we have in both of those. Okay, so we have a query result, we have items in there, and we have the item and media. Ah, okay, so you see here there's no, the G isn't capitalized here. Uh, so as always with my tutorials, you get a free debugging course along with whatever content is coming in here. Uh, so let's go back into preview mode. And here we have our media gallery. And you can see here that the structure of the data includes slug, alt, source, title, type, and settings. So if we take a look at the gallery, um, Velo reference, and we take a look at items. So you'll see here that when we're setting the items of a gallery, we need to set five things essentially. So we have here type, slug, source, uh, sorry, six things. So type, uh, slug, this is for images and videos have a separate one. So type, slug, source, description, title, and link. And you can see here that since this is already structured, since this is already a media gallery field, then the data structure is the same structure that we need essentially in order to pass to our gallery. So we have it all set up for us easily. And I'm gonna help you tackle situations where it's not like that in a moment as well. But let's first show the easiest and the simplest situation. Okay, so I'm getting all my items here from the media gallery. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the editor. And I'm just gonna pass these into my gallery. So I'm gonna say my gallery dot items equals my gallery. And we can get rid of this now because we already saw what it looks like. And if I go into preview mode, then you can see here that my gallery is already populated with what we got back from the media gallery. So as I said, this is the easy example because the data is already structured exactly how it's supposed to because that's the use of that field in a Wix data collection. But let's take a slightly 
more challenging situation where I want to use, let's say, just the images from all of these items to make up the gallery. Okay, so not the media gallery part of the collection. Let me just show you in the collections so you know what I'm talking about. So if you remember from earlier, we have image and we have media gallery. Let me switch one of these images just so that there's a little variety. Okay, switch this to living room. Okay. So we have our images and we have our media gallery. And we took just now from the media gallery, but let's say I wanna use these three images as my gallery. So if we go back here and I'm gonna get rid of this, my item. And I'm going to say, like, let's say that const my gallery equals Example query result dot items dot map. Then I'm going to say for each item, the source should be equal to item dot image. Uh, and I just need to delete this here because. And you can see here that I'm getting this squiggly red line. And why is that? Because property type is missing, okay, but it's required. So let's go ahead and add that in here. So type, and let's see what the structure needs to be. Okay, image, like this, lowercase. Uh, it's worth checking because sometimes Wix wants it in uppercase, sometimes it wants it in lowercase, depending on which API you're using. Okay, so image. And now you can see that the squiggly red line is gone. So this indicates that these would be the two mandatory uh, fields here for the gallery item. It might be mentioned here as well somewhere in the documentation. Um, usually, let's see, source property can be, yeah, usually it would indicate somewhere over here. So it would say, let's say, type optional or source description optional. It doesn't say it here, but Based on the telesense that's not red, I would think that now everything is fine, but you only really know once you check. So let's go here into preview mode. And it did work, okay? So here we have the three images that we got from the three separate images. And this was a little more challenging, sorry, the three separate items. And this was a little more challenging because we had to map the data to the correct data structure. And if I wanted, I could also add some additional information like title. That could be our item dot title. And if I had description fields, if I had link fields, uh, let's say I can also, let's add the link in. So I can say link. Okay, link, this should be a URL. So that will be item. And here we need to get the name of the link field. So let's go over here and edit. And here we have the name of the link field. So I'm gonna copy that right over and paste it right over here. And this is essentially the same as item dot something. But since you know we have these um, dashes here in the name, we wouldn't be able to do item dot link example Right, this would throw some errors here. So we have to write it out like this. Okay, this is essentially a similar, a, a different way to tap into a property of an object. And let's check this out. So I'm gonna go into preview mode. And let's say click on one of these. So now what it did is it expanded the image so here it says example two, which is the title, which is also data that I just passed in. And here it has the link. Uh, so this is not the full link. This is just, you know, part of the URL. So in terms of navigation, if I click this, okay, so it did go to that page, uh, even though, yeah, it's not very aesthetic. <laughs> um, so you might want to add the domain name in there as well. Uh, but in terms of functionality, it does work because once you're in a Wix site and you tell it to go to a certain path, 
it assumes that the domain is the domain of your site. So I'm going to go back to the editor. And one thing that I want to change now is that, let's say I want the click action. Let's go back to the home page. So now what the click action did was to expand the image. But let's say I want the click action to go directly to the link, just like we had it before in the other galleries. So we can set that using Velo as well. And we can do that using click action. OK, so once we have click action, we could say, OK, none, expand, link. So let's say I want to change it to link. So I can go here to the editor and just set that right over here. So my gallery dot click action equals link. And now if I go into preview mode and I click on one of these, you'll see that it navigates directly to the link and it doesn't open in expanded mode. Okay, but let's say I want to be able to delete one of these images from the gallery. So I'm going to go back to bum, 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 page code and home. Let's say I want to be able to delete one of these images from the gallery. And there are several ways that you can approach this. I'm going to show one option, but it's just to show you kind of a way of approaching things, a way of thinking of things. It doesn't mean there aren't other ways that you can handle this. This is really a very customized feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert back to what we had with populating the gallery with our actual media items. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say my gallery equals to the example query result item zero, like we had it before. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to store this in a global variable. So I'm going to say got my gallery. And instead of declaring it as a new variable over here, I'm just going to store the value in our existing uh, global variable up here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into the click action of one of these media items. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the click action as none. So nothing technically should happen when we click on one of the items. But what we can still do is tap into the on item clicked event. OK, so this event will still fire off even if the click action is set to none. So let's show an example of what this looks like. So right over here, down here, I'm going to tap into our gallery, select that element, my gallery, and I'm going to say on item clicked. And here they already give us an example. Uh, so we have event.item.description. So I'm just going to take event.item and I'm going to log it. So console dot log event dot item and we just need to pass the event here as a parameter okay so let's go ahead and check that out so i'm going to go here into preview mode and nothing is showing so what did i do wrong and here i need to do media dot media gallery okay preview excellent so we have our media gallery in here and when i click nothing happens but we do get a log here with our description okay and what i can essentially do now based on that click is change the value of my gallery okay so i can go ahead and say const my new gallery equals to my gallery dot filter and let's say um, image and I want to only save the images that are not that the value of let's say the source of the image is not equal to the one that I just clicked 
Uh, and this might be a little problematic because if you have two images with the same exact source, then you might run into some issues there. Um, but what you could do if you wanted to was, let's say, map the item IDs. No, we don't have the item IDs there. You know, maybe give each item in this gallery a unique ID. Um, or let's see if there's another thing that we can tap into here. Yeah, or a unique title, slug, source, description. Yeah, so we're kind of, I'm assuming here that we have a unique source for each image. If that's not your case, you might need to find another unique solution, uh, but that's my assumption here. So each one of us has, a, each image has a different source. So I can say essentially image dot source is not equal to event dot item dot source. Okay, so I'm creating a filter and I'm filtering out the one image that is equal to the one that I just clicked. So now my new gallery will be a gallery without that specific image that I clicked. And what I need to do now is just update my gallery uh, in the data set without this specific image, which I just clicked on. So let's say uh, Wix const. Hmm. Let's see. I can either query from the beginning. I could also store this up here. Yeah. Okay. Let's just query it again. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's query because I need to get that specific item. Sorry that I'm talking to myself and not to you. Uh, but example query result will be equal to await. Turn this into async. Yeah, I will explain once I get all my thoughts in order. Uh, so we're going to query example, and we're going to query specifically the one that we have here. So let's say let my item, and then I'm going to say here my item is equal to this. And then my item, basically I need the ID of this item in order to query specifically for this item, because I don't want to accidentally change one of the other galleries, which I'm not displaying at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to go and get that specific item, and then I'm going to find one that the ID is equal to my item that ID. This needs to be in quotation marks. And we're going to find that specific one. And then I can say const my or item to update i'm giving very original names here equals to it'll essentially be the same thing as this but we'll only have one item coming back here and then i can say const updated item equals to await wix data dot update example collection and then we're going to pass in the item to update and before we pass in the item to update what we're going to do is we're going to say item to update dot media gallery equals to my gallery okay and that should essentially um put the new gallery oh no sorry not my gallery oops my new gallery Okay, if I put in my gallery, then it wouldn't delete the item. If I put in my new gallery, then it should delete the item. Uh, and then let's, we could just say, populate gallery. Okay, so this will run the populate gallery again. We can also just console.log updated item. Excellent. And one last thing I want to do is just make sure that we have permissions to update. Uh, so I'm going to go here, permissions and privacy. And I'm just going to change this all to anyone. Obviously, this is not very secure. So a lot of the actions that I just wrote out here in the front end code are things that you'd probably want to handle in the back end in a production site. But since I'm just trying to give you a general idea of how to approach this, I'm not really paying very much attention to the security at the moment. So let's zoom back in here. 
And yeah, let's try it out. So I'm gonna go here into preview. And let's see, click on this. Uh, cannot set the properties of undefined setting media gallery. Okay, let's see. I am not surprised there's a bug because I wrote a lot of code without testing. Uh, da, da, da. So this query result essentially, ah, okay, here I wrote dot ID without an underscore. Let's go back into preview mode. And let's try that again. Console open, hit that. Okay, I got the updated item back. Let's see, media gallery, 57 items in this media gallery. Let's see if I click again and let's see if there's less media items. No, same amount of same amount of media items. So that means that it's not actually removing that item from the gallery. And event.item.source. Okay, let's see. Console.log event dot item dot source okay let's try that preview click this okay so that is getting the source and here's our updated item if i take a look here at the first very first item here so the source looks the same Let's see, media gallery. Let's see, let's see. This filter isn't working, I think. My new media gallery, my gallery dot filter image dot source is not equal to and dot item dot source. And let's see. Hmm, why is that happening? Let's see, my new gallery. Just make sure. Go into preview. If you know what the problem is now and you're screaming at the screen, then you can write it in the comments to just prove that you noticed it at this point. Uh, what, oh, that's okay, unrelated. Uh, new gallery. Okay. Let's see why is this happening? Source. Um, source should be not equal to event source. Okay, give me a moment to figure this out, and I'll be right back. Okay, so just to share a little bit of my debugging experience. So I added a log to actually log the source um, of the images in my, my gallery variable. And what I noticed here is that, for example, here, which are, these are obviously the two images that we're trying to compare. One here, the jogging is uppercase, and one, the jogging is lowercase. And I'm not sure why exactly that is. It must have something to do with how Wix is storing the data. But what I can do to solve this is basically make both of them to lowercase. So I'm going to go back here to the editor. And this is the log that I set up just to kind of find this little discrepancy. And I can get rid of that now because I've found what I needed to find. And get rid of this return here. Just put it back to the way it was. And instead of comparing dot source and dot source, what I'm going to do is to on, uh, sorry, uh, to lower case. Whoops. And I'm going to add that here to the end as well. And hopefully that should work now. So let's go ahead and preview. So let's go ahead and 
click this first item over here. And voila, it disappeared. <laughs> uh, it was deleted. So that is an example of how you can delete items from a gallery. Um, obviously, kind of the UI here. Oh, no, that one didn't work. Why didn't that one work? I don't know why the second one didn't work. Let's try that. Hmm. Maybe I need to do some more debugging. Um, I only managed to delete one. Oh, fashion store clerk. Hmm. Okay. So I think that there's an issue here with using the names of the source uh, because there seems to be some kind of changes that Wix makes in between how it stores this source inside of the media gallery and inside this click event. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a different approach. And instead, let's use the indexes. So I'm going to go over here and instead of filtering by the index, let's just go here. So I'm going to say my new gallery. So here I can do event. And we also had a way to tap into the index. I think that was item index. Let's take a look over here. So on item clicked. And here we also have item index. So event.item index. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. I write out some new code here. I'm going to say const index equals event dot item index. And now I'm going to declare a new my new gallery. So instead of having this one over here, I'm just going to grab this. And this will be equal to my gallery dot splice. And the start number will be index. And we're going to splice one. So that should essentially remove that item from the array. And then what we're going to do is do the same thing. So I'm going to get rid of all these logs just to clear it up a bit here. Yeah, so we're getting, then we're going to do the query again. And we're going to pass in the gallery for the update. So let's try that out. Go into preview mode. And let's say I click on this one. <gasps> OK, that was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. OK, so we essentially deleted um, our entire media gallery except for just that one image. And you can see the sensitivity now of um, deleting items and how you have to be kind of careful with it. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to change this to 1. And that way, we'll be using the next item, which uh, still has a media gallery. And OK, so my mistake here was that um, I assigned this splice here to the my new media gallery. Uh, and if essentially some the way some methods work is that they apply the action directly to this array, let's say, but what they return is let's say the item that was spliced, uh, which is essentially I took the item that was spliced and I assigned it to my new gallery, where really what I should have done is something like this, where I say my new gallery is equal to my gallery. And then I do my new gallery splice. OK, so that was my mistake. And if I go here into preview, 
And now this is my next item, which still has a gallery. And if I click one of these, then not set properties of undefined, setting a media gallery. Let's go back to the editor. Oh, um, this should still be zero. Sorry, I changed this to one, but it should still be zero because this is only going to come back with one item based on the item idea that we have here. So only this is the one that I need to change to one. And if I go back into preview mode, and then I click on this, let's say, boom. Okay, so it deleted that item. Yeah, okay. Now it is working. <laughs> um, so now I can go back to my conclusion, which is that this is not necessarily the UI that you would want to build you know, for your users. I mean, clicking on an image to delete it is kind of unintuitive unless you have a big title on top that explains that, that what, that's what it does. You, know, you might want to include some kind of pop-up that acts as a warning, and you might want to put in some other protections and run some more testing. Uh, just to make sure that this selection by index is working. Uh, in general, selecting by index is kind of iffy. An ideal situation would be if each item had a unique ID, and we did the deletion based on those IDs to prevent any kind of situation where you know I'm deleting the wrong thing, because deletions are sensitive, as you saw previously, where I accidentally deleted my entire gallery. Uh, so yeah, so definitely when you're testing this on your site, you know, make sure you have backups. Uh, anything that has to do with deletions, you're going to want to be extra careful about. But I just wanted to mainly highlight how you can extend the functionality and customize the galleries using Velo. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions uh, or reactions, please do leave them in the comments. Uh, I like to read, you know, what kind of projects you guys are working on, what you're looking for in terms of Wix tutorials. So that really helps me out and guides me toward the content that I should be creating. Uh, so thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.